everyone. I am Dr. Anjani Devi, Associate Professor, Department of Biotechnology, Vigyan Foundation for Science, Technology and Research. As you pretty well know that I am dealing with the course Enzyme Technology and we are today starting with the Unit 4. We have completed 3 units of this particular subject and we are just entering into the Unit 4. And the Unit 4, what is the syllabus included in this Unit 4? If you want to have a glance at the syllabus of the Unit 4, we are going to study about physical and chemical techniques for enzyme immobilization and what are the various techniques involved in the immobilization of these enzymes. Those are nothing but your adsorption, matrix entrapment, encapsulation, cross-linking, covalent binding. So, these are the various techniques you are going to study in this particular chapter. Along with these techniques, you are going to learn about what are the various advantages and disadvantages that are related with these techniques. Besides, you are going to learn about the applications of the immobilized enzymes. If you just recollect your unit 1, in that we have studied about industrial applications of your enzymes, that is nothing but your free enzymes. Now, in this particular unit, you are going to study about industrial applications of your immobilized enzymes. Upon studying these topics, you will understand the different immobilization methods and analyze the bioconversions in the immobilized reactors. So, you will be capable of understanding these various immobilization techniques after you completely listen to this particular unit. So, let us start with the first topic of the unit which is nothing but your physical and chemical techniques for enzyme immobilization. In this session, I will try to cover about adsorption, I will try to cover the matrix entrapment as well as the encapsulation with a discussion on advantages and disadvantages of each technique. First of all, you need to know what is enzyme immobilization and what is an immobilized enzyme? So, what is the process of enzyme immobilization? The term immobilized enzyme refers to the enzyme which is physically confined or localized in a certain defined region of space with retention of the catalytic activities and which can be used repeatedly and continuously. I want to elaborate what is enzyme immobilization now. We have already studied about free enzyme. Then what is an enzyme? It is a biocatalyst and it is proteinaceous in nature and it is guiding biochemical reactions that are taking place in a living organism. So what is the importance of this immobilized enzyme? Why you are going for immobilization enzyme? And what do you mean by immobilizing the enzyme? That means you are restricting the enzyme to particular space. You are confining the enzyme to a certain area. So, the process in which you are confining or limiting the enzyme to a certain area is nothing but is your enzyme immobilization. And what do you mean by immobilized enzyme? An immobilized enzyme is one whose movement in space has been restricted either completely or to a small limited area. I will explain you with the help of a small example. See, we have taken enzyme. We have immobilized the enzyme using certain immobilization technique. For example, here I am showing the entrapment technique. I have immobilized the enzyme within a gel. That means here, here enzyme is present here. That means now your enzyme is confined to this particular area and its movement is restricted to only this area. So, you are confining the or restricting the movement of your enzyme using certain immobilization technique. Before we discuss about various immobilization techniques, let us discuss about history of enzyme immobilization. When this enzyme immobilization has started and what for this enzyme immobilization have been started. Here 
there are four predominant steps there are four predominant steps involved in enzyme immobilization that means the enzyme immobilization technique have been developed in four different steps the first and foremost step was started in 1815 why they have immobilized the enzyme they have immobilized the enzyme in order to produce acetic acid and in order to treat waste water what the various scientists have done as a first step what had happened is first they have considered a solvent containing alcohol and they have allowed the solvent to pass through wood beads containing bacterial growth so while this ethanol have passed through this bacterial growth this bacteria have utilized that particular ethanol and it have converted the ethanol into acetic acid that means the first step was the vinegar production or you can also say that the first step of enzyme immobilization was in acetic acid production the similar strategy have been used for waste water treatment what was the second step involved in this enzyme immobilization in 1960s single enzyme immobilization was done a single enzyme have been taken and it was immobilized for the production of l amino acids as well as isomerization of glucose etc so as a first step they have gone for the production of acetic acid as a second step they have gone for immobilization of single enzyme as a third step in 1985s to 1995 multiple enzyme immobilization have been tried and they have tried for the production of l amino acids from keto acids in a membrane reactor as a fourth step after 1995 to till date enormous work have been done in the field of enzyme immobilization ever expanding multidisciplinary development and applications to different fields of research and industries immobilized enzymes have been used in various industries from 1995 onwards to till date we are still using it now we need to know what are the advantages and disadvantages involved with this immobilization of enzymes what are the various advantages see the first one is the protection of enzymes that means if you just consider a free enzyme it is susceptible to various environmental conditions if at all you consider your uh, enzyme in a reactor if you provide the enzyme with various conditions like ph and temperature those parameters are having direct effect on your enzyme stability if your enzyme is allowed to stay under the optimum ph and temperature it will be stable for long period of time if at all these conditions have been changed drastically definitely your enzyme is going to lose its stability it will be losing its activity it's going to get denatured so in order to stop or control the denaturation of this enzymes we are going for this immobilization of enzymes why because these immobilization techniques the immobilization of enzyme is going to protect the enzyme is going to safeguard the enzyme from the drastic environmental conditions that are provided in the reactor so one of the importance of this immobilization technique is to provide the protection to the enzyme so protection of enzyme from degradation as well as deactivation is the first primary importance coming to the second importance reuse of enzymes for example if you consider a free enzyme if it get denatured you're not going to use the enzyme again you're going to prepare a new batch of enzymes so in order to use the enzymes a number of times in order to reuse the enzymes we can go for this immobilization method if you go for this immobilization of this enzyme your enzyme will be having long duration it will be stable for long period of time then you can use this enzyme for number of reaction batches also so if you use immobilization immobilized enzyme you can use the enzyme for a number of batches you can reuse the enzyme 
so the another importance is you can stop the reaction at any point of time for example in the last classes we have studied about how to measure the activity of the enzyme in that we have studied that we can measure the activity of enzyme by stopping the or by denaturing the enzyme by providing the acid so if you consider a free enzyme in order to stop the enzymatic reaction which is guided by that free enzyme you need to go for enzyme denaturation but if at all you are considering an immobilized enzyme in a reactor and if you want to stop the reaction just remove those immobilized enzymes you will get your enzyme stopped there is no need for denaturation of the enzyme so this is a beneficial aspect of immobilizing the enzymes in order to stop the enzymes just remove the immobilized enzymes moreover this immobilization is going to enhance the stability of the enzymes as i told you that your enzyme is not directly subjected to or uh, exposed to drastic ph and temperature so its stability will be enhanced moreover if you are immobilizing the enzyme it will be very easy for you in order to separate your enzyme from the product at the end of the reaction but if at all you are considering the free enzyme there will be contamination of this enzyme with the product you can separate the enzyme from the product so the beneficial aspect of your immobilized enzyme is you can get a purified product there won't be any sort of contamination of your product with your product with your enzyme so you can easily separate your enzyme from the reactor and use the same enzyme same immobilized enzyme for the next batch and then as i told you that there won't be any contamination of the product with this enzyme so these are the various advantages of immobilized enzymes now just focus upon what are the various disadvantages related with this enzyme immobilization coming to the disadvantages of this enzyme immobilization the high cost high cost of this process is one of the disadvantage why this enzyme immobilization technique is highly costly because you are going to use certain matrix which we are also calling as supporting material you will have to procure the support or matrix which will incur certain amount of cost moreover in order to use an enzyme for the immobilization purpose your enzyme should be highly purified that means you need to go for number of purification steps if you increase the number of purification steps i told you that you are going to invest more amount on the purification if you want to immobilize the enzyme you need to go for number of purification steps which will be incurring more cost so this immobilization techniques are costly techniques moreover it affects the stability of the enzymes there are various immobilization techniques here we are going to learn about adsorption entrapment cross linking and covalent binding all the techniques are not going to harm the stability of the enzymes but few immobilization techniques are going to reduce the stability of the enzymes so this can be noted as one of the disadvantages linked to immobilization process the technique may not prove to be very advantage when one of the substrate is found to be insoluble so the substrate should be soluble in nature then only you can go for a effective immobilization process certain immobilization protocols offer serious problems with respect to the diffusion of your substrate to have an access towards the enzyme i'll explain you when we are talking about a immobilized enzyme and a free enzyme let us see if you have a free enzyme in a test tube if you directly add the substrate to it there is a formation of enzyme substrate complex directly instantly let us see the same situation in the case of immobilized enzyme let us think that our enzyme is entrapped within a matrix or a support molecule enzyme is present within the gel now you have added substrate to your enzyme in order to reach the enzyme 
the substrate need to pass through the pores of this gel. If there is any problem with the porosity of this gel, your substrate can't go and reach your enzyme. There won't be any formation of enzyme substrate complex and this reaction will not rise to a product. That means if you are using an immobilization technique, you have to check that your substrate is going to have a proper accessibility towards the enzyme molecule. And the next disadvantage is only very few industries are using the immobilized enzymes. Moreover, the catalytic properties of some of the enzymes are going to reduce during the immobilization techniques. You'll understand how your catalytic activity of the enzyme is going to reduce during immobilization techniques when I'm going to explain you about your covalent as well as the cross-linking immobilization processes. See, what's happening is when a matrix is going to bind with the enzyme molecule, it will be binding to the certain functional group of the enzyme molecule. The functional group of the enzyme is getting bound to the matrix. Definitely, there will be a reduction in your catalytic activity of your enzyme because of certain changes that are taking place in the enzyme. Coming to the summary of this particular session, in this session we have discussed about the chemical methods of immobilization. In that we have studied about your cross-linking as well as the covalent binding and these two are irreversible techniques. Moreover, your enzyme immobilization is one of the most promising approaches for exploiting the enzyme-based processes such as biotransformation, diagnostics, pharmaceuticals and food industries. And several hundreds of enzymes have been immobilized. We are using several hundreds of enzymes in the industry. The immobilization was successful in the case of penicillin G, SIDase, lipase, proteases, invertase, etc. We'll to work upon all these questions so that you can assess how far you have understood from today's class. I've referred all these references. Thank you.